Well, I, I mean, I think that um, you're absolutely right that it very much tracks uh, Arendt's ideas, which in turn track Weber's ideas. And the idea is that in a, uh, in a large organization, often um, decision making becomes so diffuse that it becomes very difficult to pin responsibility on any particular individual. And I think that problem is compounded in corporations uh, because they're not only large organizations, but they're organizations that have been given a legal responsibility to create profit regardless of the consequences to others. So the corporation becomes, in effect, a large social irresponsibility machine because of its institutional responsibility to create wealth for its shareholders. And so there are two ways that we can attack that. But I think the point of the film is that, and the reason for looking at people who work in corporations and saying, well, sometimes they're nice guys and sometimes they're nice gals. The reason for that is because I believe in some ways the, the left and critics have, have been distracted by vilifying individuals. Um, because the real issue is, is an issue at the structural and the institutional level. And it's the nature of the corporation as an institution and what we as a society do to it. So I guess I'd like to say is the problem is a problem for the democracy, not a problem about the individual agency and morality of the people who work in corporations. Now, many of the people who work in corporations are immoral and amoral people, but that in church is the trade in too. So I, I you know, you can find immoral and amoral people in all organizations. The problem with corporations is institutional people. They command everybody to be the, that way. And so there are two ways we can attack the problem, which were kind of canvassed. I look at them in more detail in my book. One way is to change the nature of the corporation, to say that when we are creating economic wealth and prosperity and ups and products, we should do it in a way that is uh, not detached from normative, moral, and social concerns. So the corporation detaches economic values from social and moral values. So we can restructure our institutions, our economic institutions, in ways that don't do that. And, you know, cooperatives are, are one possibility, a different of corporate structure, we can pull out. The second thing we can do is we can say, well, the corporation is what it is. And to some extent, it's going to be that way. So what we need to do is we need to impose democratic trains on it to regulate. Um, that's exactly what liberalism is saying we shouldn't do. Neoliberalism seems to suggest that the corporation is capable of being socially responsible on its own. And that's very And so it's not a commitment that the rise of neoliberalism and the rise of corporate social responsibility happen at the same time. Neoliberalism wants to privatize uh, moral behavior into corporation and thereby justify the democracy and public regulation taking a much lesser role. Uh, and so that's insane. So, so those are the two ways. Restructure the corporation, democratic, and regulate. Yes, yeah. I, it's an excellent point, and I, I am able to deal with it more fully in my book. And, and basically, the argument that I make there, um, I suppose, is in parallel um, with, with, with Marx's argument that capitalism is ultimately self-destructive. The, the, the problem you have in the corporation is that once you create a, an environment of amorality, an environment that says we don't have to be concerned about moral regard for workers or for the environment or for children or for anything. Once you create that environment, then in a way it's difficult to morally constrain amorality. 
So, so there will be uh, uh, a tendency towards greed. And so even the thing that the corporation is supposed to be doing, serving its shareholders, uh, it, the individuals stop doing because they're working in this amoral environment and they start to actually undermine the very mission of the corporation in order to serve their own individual greed. And you know what's happening in Cyprus today is, is happening around the world. Um, it, it, probably the first largest eruption of this was Enron in the early 2000s, where we saw exactly this dynamic. And, and in my book, I use Enron to, to make this argument that really they were just the, the corrupt executives were really just taking uh, to the logical extreme the code of amorality that was built into the structure of the institution. So ultimately, the corporation self-destructs. In the same way that site has a great self-destruct. As do psychopaths. Yeah. As do, as do psychopaths. Or was it psychopathies? Questions. I, I, it, it's a very, um, it, it's a very corrosive, corrupt, and destructive way to try to create an economy. If if you ask Martians from another planet if they came to Earth, and you said to them, "How should we create an economy and a society?" that is sustainable, where people are happy, where people are fulfilled, where people are fed and they have roofs over their head. The last institution that they would create would be the corporation. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, I, I, I completely agree, and I think part of the reason the gap uh, between governments and the people is increasing is because governments are more beholden to corporations, um, because the, uh, the, the various um, collective powers of capital, uh, of corporate capital, have in a way captured our public and democratic institutions. And so to that extent, uh, in countries like the United States and my country of Canada, the the linkages between the uh, the elite um, corporate world and the government world are so strong that the government, uh, you know, as many leftists have analyzed and Marx said, that the state is captured in effect by corporations uh, and corporations and governments and uh, uh, working for the interests of corporations rather than the interests of the people. What the solution to that is the largest question of, and one of the things that concerns me is that one line of thinking that you see right off in, in NGOs, uh, in the environmental movement, on the left, is that we should give up on governments and work directly with corporations, and we're trying to make them socially responsible. And I think that is huge because the state is basically the institution that empowers private capital. Um, the market can't exist without a massive public intervention. Corporations are created by the state. They're right to protect by the state. You can out of property rights without the state. So to abandon in the political structure of the state, I think it's to uh, surrender the place that we need to be working uh, and leave it to the uh, forces of capital and, and corporation. So, so I, you know, one I disagree with my movement is that they will primarily anarchistic rather than socialistic, that they they believe that uh, that we should do our activism uh, in the streets, but not necessarily in the political institutions of the state. Um, my own view is that we need to reoccupy the state. Uh, we need to make democracy 
do what it's supposed to be doing, which is institutions that reflect sort of the interests of the people. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that, just to finish the point, I mean, I, I think the person asking the question has, that is the main question, is how do we recapture our public institutions so that they serve the public interest, that they reflect the democratic will uh, instead of being tied to the corporate agenda. And what's happening in Europe, uh, you know, right now in, in Brussels, I mean, and the, the massive uh, influence of corporations is not unlike what's happening in Washington, D.C., or in London, or in Ottawa. Uh, this is, I think, the problem of our time, that we, in effect, are privatizing governance. And I don't have a simple answer about how to uh, undo that. Um, but what I do believe is that our strategies have to be aimed at, in effect, occupying the, the public sphere and the democratic institutions that we have. We need to take them back, in effect. Yeah. Well, and I'm not familiar enough with, with what is happening on the ground in Cyprus to be able to advise you in a concrete way. In general terms, what I would say is um, to, to be very confident that, uh, that privatizing governance and government services is a very bad thing, um, which obviously you are, so you don't need to hear that from me. But I think that um, there may be a soft uh, sort of center in politics that uh, is somewhat progressive and believes that perhaps um, you know companies can be socially responsible, that they can deliver public services, and that they can do a good job of this. And I think if there's a message from my film and from all of my work, it's that that is a myth and that is a lie. And that is a legitimating, um, supporting uh, ideology for neoliberalism, and it's one that we need to resist. So if there's a way to mobilize the idea that this kind of privatization is absolutely wrong, that it is not the way forward, that to the extent people are saying it's benevolent and good, they're deceived, there's a way of mobilizing that idea and trying to uh, brought them out from, uh, from smaller, larger groups, be able to pull in people who, uh, who might be deceived by that, then and, and that would probably be a, a, a good way forward. But other than that, I think it's the same problem that we face in, in every country where, uh, where we have governments that are beholden to corporate agendas and have a problem, like Canada. Um, and it, it's the problem of politics. And, and it's, 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 you know, the, the basics, you have to organize, you have to protest, you have to uh, activate the political parties of the left, you have to support them. It, it's, it's fixed for me over and over again, and I wish, I wish my life would be so much better if I had a magic bullet, if I had an answer to that. I think there's no other answer than the heart of all of it, which is what people doing all around different weapons and places. It's an, it's an incredibly uh, uh, bizarre notion because ultimately the economy is as good as it's serving the needs of the people, but somehow that notion has been detached. And the economy has become, has been reified, has become its own uh, entity that somehow uh, hovers above the actual needs of the people. And then that becomes the criteria for determining whether the state is doing the right thing and whether the market is doing well. And somehow we, the people, have to some extent bought into that. I don't think most people have. I, I believe most people are smarter than that. But in terms of the lead opinion of journalists and, and television and news organizations, 
which themselves are, as the film shows, are part of the corporate world, um, they have continued to propagate this myth. And you know, you can go back to Gramsci and, and Marx and all the great thinkers about hegemony and ideology and, and, and understand it works, but, uh, but it's very toxic. And, and I think uh, the kind of work that your organization is doing, the kind of work I try to do, uh, kind of work other filmmakers, their writers, uh, scholars, academics, intellectuals, um, trade unions, I mean, environmental movement, we just have to keep um, making the points that have to be made. And, and I think we have to be very, very aware, especially in the NGO movement, of getting sick to the book that we can or within this with corporations and effectively as governance. That's to me that's the most uh, uh, that's the, the most felt one, the most dangerous idea around that. Uh, and it's one we have to keep possessing I mean, that that's that I think that's a great question, and, and I think that to some extent, um, you know, flash mobs, the problem is that they're a flash. Um, you know, I believe politics is, is, very, is very hard, sustained institutional work, um, and flash mobs can be useful in drawing attention to something, but there then has to be a, a, a movement beneath that that, that is actually working uh, towards the end. And I, I think the, the, the way that you put it about politics becoming spectacle is very, very uh, profoundly correct. Because in, in this uh, uh, age of social media and internet and Twitter, and the, the, the boundaries between spectacle, entertainment, thought, politics are becoming very fuzzy. And we think because we we have this incredible power, you know, that I can put something up on Twitter and hundreds or thousands of people will see it. It's a false sense of power. It doesn't really necessarily do anything. If there are structures of political organization and mobilization and action that can pick up on whatever attention the spectacle is drawn. But I think we've lost sight of that to some extent and have come to the view that pushing buttons and liking causes and moving our mouse and sitting in front of the screen um, and sending out tweets uh, and being on and organizing this and that, I think we, we've kind of begun to believe that that's a form of politics that's going to work. And, and the difficult is that the questioner pointed out, um, you know, not only it's technical, but it's technical that Companies can take over, and companies can co-opt. Um, and in my uh, in my latest book, uh, it's called Childhood at Siege, and I speak some of the way that companies have succeeded in co-opting the idealism of youth uh, and in, in presenting themselves as a facilitator of progressive action around the environment or or around social causes, or world poverty, or hunger. So there's a real uh, way in which kind of co-optation uh, is happening. Uh, and I very dangerous. Again, shows that corporations, not public institutions, can take the lead of progressive issues, can be benevolent, can, can be progressive government, when in fact it can't be any of that, and that it's all just a mirage. Uh, so that, 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 that the question is a very poignant one.
Uh, you know, it, it's very possible. I mean, what what is um, I think indisputable is that these continued expansions of um, free trade deals are very much driven by the neoliberal uh, ideas of deregulation and privatization. They effectively constrain governments from uh, from providing public services and from publicly regulating companies. So they enable corporations, as you say, to, uh, to expand the domain, uh, both within particular economies and among economies. And that means that um, it wouldn't surprise me at all that, uh, that these global corporations of the West are, are interested in, in challenging um, the, the growing power of Chinese companies, and in particular, state-owned companies. And, and, and that's uh, many of the companies that operate on a global scale out of China are, are public companies in the sense that they're up on the state. Uh, and so in a way, um, there's a, uh, an incentive, I guess, for, for Western capitalist corporations to try to make inroads uh, in, into, into those economies. And, you know, to say that, they're, uh, that their ambition is ultimately to be able to uh, harvest, which is how they talk about it, cheap labor in Asia, I think it's just to, to state um, what any of those 600 uh, executives would, uh, would agree to if, if they were being honest. Um, companies are looking for cheap labor. They're looking for any kind of political or economic advantage they can gain in getting it. And they're looking for ensuring that uh, states and governments are not able to, uh, to regulate effectively um, and to get in the way of their ambition to, uh, to extract that they can at, at, at little as is possible. So, the general answer, there it is. I'll get back to you. Thank you for spending two and a half hours watching the film. It's a very long film, so I appreciate that. And have a very good, good night. Have a glass of wine, relax, and enjoy the evening. Thank you.